individual members. Um, it's specifically for government because obviously if we were doing a FMCG, a fast moving consumer goods, they have different numbers that they're looking at and different priorities and different KPIs and different all kinds of things. So if you haven't met me before, my name's Laurel Papworth. I'm a lecturer, workshop facilitator at universities, colleges, conferences, and with private clients, and of course in a um, strange new post-apocalyptic world, I consult on Zoom. Sorry, I train on Zoom. I'm not consulting on Zoom at the moment. What's the difference between training and consulting? Well, consulting is I do the work and training is you do the work. So yeah, I'm going to have to do the work with this one. Could you let me know if the sound is okay, please? I am still playing with the sound. I'm not an audio engineer, but I do need to have good quality sound. I think even if people don't watch the screen, talking of which, let's switch across. Um, yeah, that'll do. Then uh, they like to listen. I don't know. Do you? It's like my students. I know that their noses are buried in their phones and laptops and iPads, but one hopes they've still got their ears up and listening. All right, so analytics. This is the area that I love. Probably the analytics I prefer the most are the ones to do with algorithms. So as an example, you'll notice that my backdrop, and particularly over here, is the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Just looking on my little monitor up there. <laughs> um, have I got my fingers right? So that's uh, Circular Quay, the Carl Expressway, and it's during Vivid, Sydney, which I think is in May. And it's Gary P. Hayes's photograph, landscape photographer extraordinaire. Thank you, Gary, for the photo. And why did I swap out my blue background for a Sydney background? Well, one of the data sets in the algorithm uh, across the platforms have different names. So on Facebook and Instagram, it's called Deep Face. On Google, it's called Deep Mind. Yes, I think. I have to go back and look at the data research papers again. But it's about object identification. So... I'm testing, I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm testing to make sure that the um, algorithm is picking up that this is a Sydney-based, New South Wales-based, Australian-based video. So we're going to look at yeah things that are relevant to us, just in case you're checking in from a different part of the world. Is Sweden on? I can't see him hammer something from Sweden. Anyway, all right, so to start with, we're going to, look, I thought what we'd do, because we only have an hour, which is about 15 minutes per platform, which is not enough to write the first audit document, the first analytics document, but it is enough to go into the secrets and also to extrapolate out, out of all of the data, what we could be looking at. And if you already look at these things, and they're not secrets to you, feel very free to term, tell me off in the comments. But if you didn't know any of them, awesome, fantastic. You got some use out of it. So when I'm on my, we'll start with Facebook, then we'll go to Twitter, then we'll go to LinkedIn for the analytics. When I'm on my Facebook page, um, I know about the new rules, thank you. There's a few things that we can do here. We can change our insights to the last 28 days. Oh, by the way, the note that I think I just closed is the warning that they're going to reduce how far back you can go with data. Um, so, and I'll get to that in a moment, but I we always download the spreadsheets and I'm going to show you the spreadsheet so that you can have a quick whiz through and make sure you understand things. We're not looking at ads today. I think ads data is probably something that needs to have its own session. I don't know if I'll do an ads data one for government or for a different industry. Please let me know. Um, governments uh, in Australia, this why I'm focusing on Australia, have different style ad campaigns than, for instance, in America. I've already shown you um, 
Donald John Trump was spending $131 million on ads. We don't have anything like that in Australia. A few boosted posts. So what do I look at? Uh, well, one thing I do quickly in the overview section of Insights, so you go to facebook.com slash your page, whatever your page is, slash insights. When you go to overview, at the bottom, you can um, see the, I just want to make sure you can see it. You can see the total likes, even if you're not a page admin. So I can see Coca-Cola and Red Bull and Donald Trump and Zara, and I'm not an admin. I can see the changes from last week, posts from this week, and then engagement. Now, one of the issues that we have is the new pages are coming out and they're removing the number of likes from the page in the same way they've done that with Instagram, which may mean that it's removed from this area of pages to watch, or it could only be here that if you go to the if you go to the actual page, um, let me go to Coca-Cola. No, let me go to Red Bull. I prep a lot of things for lectures, but one of the reasons I like doing live lectures, even at uni and colleges and things like that, is because we can move into different areas. Obviously, with tutorials, they're all live. When I go to the Red Bull page, I can see that 48 million people subscribe to the page. Not much difference between the follow and the people liking the page. So um, that's being hidden. And I don't know about checked in. I imagine that will be hidden as well. Will it be moving from here? Who knows? Right. So we've got no change from last week. We've got changes on the others. So Joe Biden's gone up 7%. Sarah's up 0.1%. Uh, Donald Trump's page obviously is in hiatus, for want of a better word. And he had 853,000 engagements with zero ads, zero everything. If you can't see it clearly, please let me know. I do want to remind people, especially those on LinkedIn, that the API is pretty poor. So you need to go into the cog and make sure you're on HD or high definition or whatever it is that it says there. And otherwise, sometimes with all the platforms, the video gets clearer and better as time goes on. I suspect if I was some Uber influencer in this area, instead of a little niche trainer, then um, they would have upgraded me. <laughs> But they haven't, so we don't. All right, so Coca-Cola has 5.5 million likes, zero posts, zero changes, 29,000 engagements. Possibly could be from ads, but I'd need to go into the ad library to see that. Red Bull has 48 million likes, 5.2 million engagements, and 14 posts, and it's not showing me the changes. I think there would be changes here. Now, to see the top post, which is the other analytics, so the first one you want is the number of likes and the changes. And this is a competitor analysis. So this is good to do before you even create your page so you know the state of play in your industry. I'm just going to scroll that down a little bit. I'm a bit worried my big old head's in the way. Is it in the way? Maybe. You want to take down the total number of subscribers that they have you want to see any changes in the last week. And obviously you're going to do this weekly so you can analyze the peaks and troughs within the industry, within your frenemies, your, um, if you're a politician, then it's going to be the incumbents, the opposition, whatever you want to call them, the stakeholder pages, joint venture pages, department pages, ministers pages, Local politicians, local council, local chamber of commerce, you might want to put them all in here, or at least some of them. And you will note the difference in the likes, and then from last week, the number of posts that they're doing, and then the amount of engagement they get. And you'll notice very quickly that posts and engagement are usually 
correlative. So the more posts there are, the more engagement. And make a note of that unless it's super boring posts. Red Bull doesn't tend to do super boring posts. I'm not doing politicians deliberately, okay? Because I don't want to pick on someone because I did that last week and then I felt guilty all week. So we're not going to do that. But I don't mind picking on Red Bull. If I click on Red Bull, what you're looking for is the top post. So this is something that the algorithm has determined as being highly viral and worthy of being in the news feed. And you can learn a lot from the analytics here. So I'm looking at something that's six days old, and they'll be varying usually in date and time. It, it, it's not always last in, best dressed, and it's not always the oldest, most mature assets are the ones at the top. It chops in and out. Chops in and out, you know what I mean. Some things just ooze cool. This is one of them. Tagging a key influencer that has the same followers is a great idea, the same audience, because that allows the algorithm to uh, cross-correlate. This audience is also this audience, which is obviously going to help increase your analytics. And then we can see there's 1.1 thousand comments, 4,000 shares, 30, 29, 30,000 reactions. And then this one was 14 hours ago is the second one on the list. Again, tagging people that have a similar audience. Uh, Red Bull's focused there. I mean, I know they're an FMCG and everybody drinks pop or soda or whatever you call it, wherever you are. But there is, it is critical that um, they, they t carve out a niche in their channel. And in the niche for this channel are dudes and dudettes that like extreme sports. And we're looking here at 4.8 thousand reactions, 1.2 thousand comments, 1.8 thousand shares. Is it as many as the top posts? No, but it's aging very well. At 14 hours, it's doing extremely well. Also note that this one was the public audience. And so I make a note of public versus uh, custom audiences. Unfortunately, we can't tell the custom audience unless it's boosted to us and then we say why did we see this then we can go in and analyze it another one that I sometimes do is go into the ad library and check the custom audiences to if it's been boosted or in some other way added into the ad library so these are the kind of analytics that we want from our competitors. We want to know the top post from them, which you have to click on each one, or go into posts and then pages you watch. And then we take the subscribers, we look at the changes, we look at the number of posts they're doing on average, and then we're looking at engagement this week. I know that you guys know the ad library for my other lectures, but let's just quickly go into ads library. Again. Although it's focusing on issues, elections and politics and Facebook splits countries up into three different groups, depending which country you're in, mandatory, uh, preferred and up to them. So each, we're in the middle, Australia's in the middle one, USA's in the first one, but normally you can find things. So if I click on search all and then I put in Red Bull, I'll just show you the other quickly the other analytics. I'm not going to do a full ad analytics here. But um, this one's such an interesting one. So 48 million likes. They've called themselves a media news company, not an FMCG company. So they're nothing to do with supermarkets or garage, petrol station, <laughs> um, drinks machines they've called themselves a media and news company they see themselves as delivering a magazine on extreme sports as opposed to selling red bull very interesting strategy and instagram 14000 uh, facebook 48000 write those down so that's you've got your red you've got your instagram numbers there I also write down the number of admins when I'm doing an analytics audit because it's important. And in this case, you can see they're covering every country, every time zone, and presumably every language. When I say every, I am exaggerating. Just in case you feel like you want to write down a comment about, oh, I'll say everyone. 
I didn't mean every country and every language. Only ancient Latin and ancient Greece. All right, so let's keep going. Is this the one I want? No, it's not. It's that one. It's that one. All right. Um, page was created in 2007. Lots and lots and lots of admins to give them coverage. Some of this could be the agency that's managing the page. One of the things that agencies tend to do is put the whole team into their business manager suite thing. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean each one of these people are hands-on or it could mean that 90% of these guys are just doing the ads. So I'm looking at Australian ads and then I can go through and see uh, what's going on, what the ads are. Some are here, so it's kind of nice to see the snow. Anyway, let's keep going. What are we up to? 119. I need to move on because I said 15 minutes per platform. We're already 20 minutes in. Ah, oh, man. Um, there, the critical ones there. Under posts, without going through every piece of analytics, top posts from pages you watch, we're back at looking at the Red Bull stuff in here. Some things just ooze cool. That was the top one from Red Bull. And um, it's just another way of finding some of them. When your fans are online, this is when the fans are on Facebook and online in general, not necessarily on my page. This page is being run in Pacific time zone. It's a training page. Don't worry about the fact that the data is not exactly available at the moment, but you can go through um, day by day, hour by hour, and see how many people are, are online. So you know your quiet times could be five in the morning and your busy times could be 9.30 at night. You'll see all that there. And it will change depending on your audience. One thing that's interesting or important is post types. So if you have more than 2,000, that was the last time I checked the data research, I think it's 2,000 2, people on your page, then... Facebook and Instagram and the other platforms determine the kind of story type. So I, in my analytics, I'm keeping an eye on whether the platform thinks that my channel is for visual story types or whether it thinks it's for text story types. We've already covered this in the first video in this series for governments, so I don't want to go through it again, but I'm aware that people join at different times. Effectively, story types are an analysis of does the user, the person using the platform, prefer their content in video and images like magazine and they love Instagram and Pinterest or do they prefer text and they are not interested in flicking through Instagram and Pinterest and would rather read the Washington Post or read data research papers or patents. Guilty as charged. <laughs> so... In the top left is me. Good. I'm out of the way. Mostly out of the way. I can see I'm shifting my page now. It used to be text and links. Oh, they call it status and link on here. Um, I've been moving it across to visual types. You can usually do that on an MAU, a monthly active user. So you can shift the Titanic <laughs> from... Um, visual to text or text to visual but you can't mix them and you'll notice that the other part of the database becomes a dead database so um, this is just like I said a play page it's not a best practice page but definitely check your post types and write the stuff down all right I don't think there's anything I hear I particularly want oh I do want to point out another hidden thing people get a bit confused your fans are not your people reached and then there's an additional button here which is engagement I haven't posted in the last week so um, but it will shift and move so my fans are predominantly women 35 to 44 followed by 45 to 54 when I go to people reached it's moving slightly older it's 45 to 54 first 
And I've got pages where it's predominantly men in their 20s are the fans. And then the people reached are women over 65. So you really need to keep an eye on those numbers. And I recommend you keep them in your weekly report or your monthly report or whatever it is you're doing because you need to track those changes. You need to see how the algorithm is looking at your direct channel, the people who subscribe to your channel, and then the other data sets, FOAF, friend of a friend, older friends, younger friends, male friends, female friends, local friends, overseas friends, whatever, that's the FOAF, social graph. On LinkedIn, it's called the economic graph. I forget what Twitter calls it, whatever. Um, and then you need to look at the lookalike and the stranger audiences. Are they the same as your direct channel? So is the um, owned channel the same as the earned channel? If you're in marketing, you know what I'm talking about. Is the, are the people that you talk to the same as the people that you're, the strangers that you're reaching? So people who know and love you versus the others. 124, goodness me. Okay, let's move on. Uh, when we're on overview, if you're working for me on pages that we're managing, we learned the hard way that we have to download all of the um, bit of lag I can see. Is the audio laggy? I'm hoping that it's not. Um, but we bring the... Um, we download into CSV, page, post, and video data. Video is a separated out data. And then we do it from the last, um, the last date range, you know, like each month or each week. And given that they're now acknowledging the fact that they won't let you go back forever and ever and ever to download it I recommend you do this at least once a month I think they are giving us um, 130 days what's that 30 60 90 120 four and a half months that can't be right maybe it's six months 180 days but you want to be able to export the data now we take out all the page data but if you're doing analytics and insights reports then what you may want to do is choose from the list what you want in the data if you're lazy me just take it all what do you care <laughs> of course what it does is it makes for these absolutely massive CSVs. So as an example, I've got a column here, lifetime unique 60 second views, the number of unique people, so not people who went back and watched it again or bookmarked it and re-saw it, um, re-watched it, re -saw it, you know what I mean, that these are the unique people that saw this video. And it's six. Oh, is that yesterday's video? I don't know. And you just go through these lots and lots and lots of columns. And what I tend to do is then make a note of the column heading. And that's the one that I head to each time. And I also have set up a little script to make it a different color so I can scan quickly and find it. Uh, you don't have to go to that extent. But it, it gives me a lot more data. The lifetime percentage of auto-played views at each interview interval, you know. So if you've got a town hall or a just some sort of a video that's an interview with your with your politician or your politicians interviewing a local business owner or I don't know something, and you want to really dig into the video views and download the video one. If you're not doing videos, obviously you don't have to download that one. You can just download probably the much busier, more informative, uh, you know, photo posts and text posts. But it will give you a lot more insight into your analytics if you grab those CSVs. Once they're down in CSV, you can open them up in Excel in Apple Numbers. And for me, I import them into Google Sheets and check them there or keep store them there. 
and you can also place them on the server for the team to look at. Why would you need these? Because you might get to the election and say, uh, we need to analyze the election results from three years ago or four years ago or whatever, and then you find none of these spreadsheets, none of the insights are available to you. So you don't have that historical record. And in fact, it's one of the reasons it's a good idea to write reports, even if nobody likes reading them because they all find them super boring. I don't, I like them. <laughs> um, then at least you've got them to go back and have a look and say, what did we post up? What worked? What didn't? What got people's knickers in a knot? What didn't? Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Okay, next. <clears throat> One thirty. If you're watching this, could you let me know if the sound's okay? Thank you. <laughs> um, LinkedIn. I'm not going to go into every aspect of LinkedIn. A lot of it duplicates Facebook business pages. You can go to LinkedIn company pages and look at a lot of the same kind of analytics, download spreadsheets, all that sort of stuff. So we're just going to start narrowing down now into the more secret type of area. So for individuals, your social selling index is your, I don't know why it's called selling, I guess because they assume Everybody on LinkedIn is selling something, more likely their soul. <laughs> Don't mind, just move over there. Um, but it gives you a score based on what's been going on on LinkedIn for individuals. So um, my industry rank is in the top 2%, go me. And my network SSI rank is in the top 12%. What does that mean? So let's have a look at the components of the score. 21.1, establish your professional brand. So this is complete your profile with the customer in mind. Become a thought leader by publishing meaningful posts. And if you found this video meaningful, then obviously I'm a thought leader. <laughs> Um, if you didn't, then I'm not, which is fine. Find the right people. This is one of the reasons I don't like Lion. Um, Lion's the LinkedIn open networker, meaning they'll connect to anyone and everyone because the algorithm is looking for the psychographics of your followers and who you follow and then tries to make sure that the social media asset crosses the channels appropriately and so if you're an SEO expert and you connect to people who are interested in SEO then your SEO content will deliver across those psychographics but if you add in every man and his dog and every woman and her dog cat then you're going to um, run into trouble. So the right people identify better prospects in less time using efficient search and research tools, being able to go in and search and connect to people, uploading obviously your databases and things like that. Do you engage with your insights? So basically what I'm saying we should do, which is are you looking at uh, your quantitative and qualitative information to ensure that you are taking the right direction and then are you building relationships by finding and establishing trust with decision makers are you engaging with them are you leaving comments are you asking questions and doing things like that and I'm 67 out of 100 which is probably not brilliant <laughs> It's not, it not something that I spend a huge amount of time on personally. In the e-learning industry, sales professionals have an average SSI of 23. I'm in the top 2%. Fine. I sometimes shift my uh, industry around so I can see what's going on. 
And sometimes I put in that I'm in manufacturing because I want to see what the manufacturing numbers are. So you could play with these sort of analytics to see whether they give you any information or any insight. Are they vanity metrics? Kind of yes and no. But at the end of the day, if you're not sure if you're getting cut through, you know, for me, numbers are how I tell. For other people, it's it's the quality of the engagements and the chats, which I also adore. But I do want to know, you know, is there anything more that I need to do? So I'm not aiming to be number one in my network because I want to beat other people. I've always been somebody that's taken my own road. and But I do maybe like to improve on my own numbers, my own analytics. So, you know, good luck to the people who spend a lot of time and energy on here. Katrina, thank you. And Gary Friedman, thank you. You're my new favorite subscribers. Actually, you're my favorite subscribers for weeks now, but I don't like to pay favorites. And you're both on Facebook, which is awesome. Um, no, I should be on the top right. Let's go over there. So the second thing I want to point out about LinkedIn, remember, you can go into company pages if you're a page admin and you can look at all the same things I've just shown you for Facebook. But for your website, you can actual, add the pixel. LinkedIn calls it the tag. And you can analyze the people that visit your website. For instance, I can check by job function who's visiting my website. So my website is lowellpapworth.com. I've added the LinkedIn pixel, which means the pixel's running on the website and then talking back to LinkedIn and checking to see who's visiting. And about 26, 27% of the visitors to my website, lowellpapworth.com, using the insight tag, that's what I've named it, is a website audience or a custom audience if you're used to Facebook's terms. And they're in marketing bunch in business development, bunch in media and communication, human resources, and we keep going through. Education numbers are a bit low and they're down on last week, so I need to work on that just by using my hashtags and by... Um, I don't want to get into solutions. We're just talking numbers, analytics, insights, <laughs> statistics, and I keep going through. Now, what's also cool with the LinkedIn insight tag is I can click on company and I can see that, oh, this is my company. One of my companies is the community crew. So I visit my own website. Sure. In the last month. But this is a company that's visited and this is a university that's visited. Again, not that uncommon because I work at universities and I work in um uh, voluntary education training sector, which I'm assuming is what this is. I'm not going to scroll through them all, but if you're interested, you need to have the developer add the insight tag to your website. I'm using WordPress, so it was fairly easy for me. I don't know what it's going to be like for your platform. And then and you can go into LinkedIn without buying an ad, but you do have to go through the campaign manager, which is the ad program don't buy an ad just use the campaign manager and you'll be able to analyze weekly who's coming in what jobs they have the percentage of marketing jobs versus education people who have marketing jobs versus people that have education jobs coming in and it will give you insight into how your uh, what audience audiences are coming to you now for b2b this is critical how politicians and local government and chambers of commerce and ministers of parliament and federal this and local that would use it is up to you tagging specific pages often helps so if you have an initiative or a policy that's directed towards small business and b2b and i don't know high street retail accountants and lawyers in the area an event that you're running or fundraise or something like that, uh, then that would help you. That would give you insight. I want to point out that 
the pixel remarketing, retargeting is completely changing, partially due to the new version of iPhone that's coming out. Apple is removing the ability to track pixels as such. So it's no longer about browser-based tracking. You're going to have to go in and get your developer to add the official plugin app plugins into your website, into WordPress or whatever, and then do your tracking that way. It's no longer a Chrome thing or Safari thing or Firefox. Safari and Firefox have already removed pixel tracking and Chrome is about to, and then Apple's forcing it through the iPhones and probably the Mac OS. So it's, it, you're going to have to use, it's just a, it's a different door. They're not removing it. It's about privacy and control, but it's forcing it's forcing the pixel away from the browser into the website back end that's all so if you're running LinkedIn, linkedin pixels linkedin goodness me linkedin pixels facebook pixels twitter pixels as part of your analytics and strategy then you you need to wake up and make sure that stuff's been updated and it's on my to-do list I'm doing it myself, so whatever. All right, so Twitter. Where do I want to be? I want to be in the top right, I think. Yes. Go to analytics.twitter.com. I need to warn you, uh, Twitter's in some kind of panic mode after watching what's happened with Facebook. And so they're hiding things and then showing them and... I used to be able to see the third-party partner data. Now they've hidden that. Third-party partner is where they pull in credit cards and mortgages and job titles and all that kind of stuff from the big data companies. It's not removed. It's hidden. <laughs> just a reminder. We didn't suddenly gain back privacy. They just hid the fact that we're not very private. But I can go into the tweets area and uh, – sorry, into my home area and I can see – I have 48,000 followers, down 233. Um, there has been a big clean through on Twitter recently. So a bunch of people got their accounts suspended and then just it's general attrition. People um, deleting their own accounts. I think once Donald Trump is off Twitter, uh, Twitter's going to do what it was doing four years ago, which is crashing. So I wouldn't be investing in Twitter anytime soon. And I can see my top tweet and top mentions. So I've got 48,000 followers. I've had 73,000 impressions in the last month. Um, my tweet that earned me 6,000 impressions was this one. This one mentioning me had 17 engagements. So there's sort of numbers here that are kind of interesting. If I go into the tweets area... I'm looking for any peaks and troughs in engagement and how people saw things. So I did eight tweets on Saturday, January the 9th, and I received 12,000, 13,000 impressions on that day. So the majority of mine came from there. I've got a feeling it was about the whole Telstra NBN fiasco that my local politician ended jumping up and down on getting the Sydney Morning Herald covering it because it wasn't just me, it was a whole bunch of people in the Blue Mountains of New South Wales who were having issues with the fact that our local telco had turned off telephone support and we'd all lost connection to things. Um, which, by the way, is still with the Ombudsman. I must find out what happened with that. So I can change this to go back seven days or um, to a different date range. But again, make sure you export your data. Hide me. And the reason why you want to export your data is exactly the same reason for Facebooks and Instagram data. It's because it vanishes. It's a shocker. You think you should be able to go back, oh, let me just go back four years and see what happened in the last election, and everything's gone. So make sure you back up your data. And again, let me just spread this out a little bit. I get the secret tweet ID. Not that secret if I'm showing it in a live stream video, but whatever. 
um, the status update, the actual tweet itself, and then we can go into, oh gosh, the impressions, engagements, and likes. Now it's interesting because most of these have had profile expansions. Profiles, okay, but they're not registering. I just think that in some respects, no, all right, not in some respects, in a lot of respects, even though Twitter bought their data research company years ago, and I've got it in the last video and I've forgotten it again. Was it? I keep thinking it's Blue Wow. It's Blue something. Blue Dolphin. I think I'm thinking it's a wow because of the wa the foul wow that, that Twitter has when it goes down or it's not available. And then everybody puts up a picture of the foul wow. It's a, a wow with a, that's beached or something. I can't remember now. Twitter hasn't been down for ages. Let's go back to here. The So we can download the data here, and you absolutely should. You can see your engagement rate, your link click rate, your retweets without comment. And retweet without a comment is more like a reaction, kind of. No, I guess it's more like a share without a comment. Um, and then likes are favorites. And people replying. So if I change this to the last seven days, I can see, I guess, a lot more what's going on. Oh, that's interesting. Talk about, um, oh, what do you call it? The uh, sort of infinite loop. This is the live lecture at the moment and it's currently had 252 impressions and one engagement and that was, it's been running for 41 minutes and it's still running on Twitter and Periscope. And I am sorry whoever engaged, if you left me a comment, I don't see it because it's not coming through on my chat box. If you leave me a comment and I don't respond on the live, please check or you should get notification because I do go in and answer everybody on LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and YouTube because not all of those platforms, APIs are particularly stable. Right, uh, Twitter, I can go in and check my videos. So again, it's like Facebook, um, and it's saying I'm not published any videos, so I actually would need to go into Periscope because I live stream my videos through Periscope. And um, yeah, but of course, Periscope's finishing in March. So, and I'm sorry, I still have not discovered what they're replacing it with, if anything. It's going to. What else do I want to do here? I think that's it for Twitter because uh, the top mention versus the top media tweet. So a media tweet is, did they, um, the media tweet is, has media in it. So it has a, an image. So it's a story type. It's an image or video. And I got 5,000 impressions for that particular one. And then I can go back to previous months. So December 24,000, 25,000 on my, this setup here. <laughs> Except I didn't show my green screen <laughs> in the photo or the image. And, um, you know, it is what it is. It's interesting how you extrapolate this stuff out. And just remember that if you do go into the actual tweet itself, you can also get to the tweet activity underneath. So if I click on here, it gives me a pop over, what's called a pop over, and it tells me 27,000 people, uh, 28,000 people saw.
this image and I had 750 engagements on the image, you know, which is probably not that bad given I've got, how many followers have I got? 58,000. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any hidden analytics that I particularly like. Oh, there is one actually. So we look at following and followers and we can look at engagement and we can look at story types and we can download the spreadsheets and things like that. But the other one that I like to do is go to slash lists and I, oh, they've introduced pinning. I probably did that months ago and I paid no attention to it. So when I go to your lists, I look for how many people on my main list. So I think I've got a politician's one down here somewhere. News politics, New South Wales politics. That's not mine. I'll just go to... I'm looking for one that's mine because I actually want the data from it. Um, but it needs to be public. Let's say FinServe Australia. I know it's not a political one and I'm sorry, okay. But if I'm here, I can see how many followers I've got on my list and how many members I've put on the list. So if you haven't worked with lists before, it's where you... You may be on a list of Australian politicians or you may be on the Chamber of Commerce's list or you may be on the uh, on a journalist list like you would have seen Latika Burke has a copy of my media journalist list. And then you want to check the members of it. So the members are the people that I've put on the list. So these are all the people I've added to the FinServe list. And what it does is it extrapolates out of the whole of Twitter and it creates a separate news feed of just those people. So people can then follow the list. So now I'm interested to see who's following my Australian fintech list and that gives me more people that I can add. If I... I am going to find my political list because... Australian politics, that'll do. So I've put 11 members on my list and it's got two followers. And then I want to check their analytics. What are they posting? How many comments? How many reshares? How many favourites? And then obviously I would go in and look at more. Now, one area, and we're coming to an end because we've got about six minutes left. One area I think that's critical to point out is normally when I'm teaching this, I also teach favorability and sentiment and analytics. So not just the number of likes, the, num the amount of engagement and reach, impressions, um, country, languages, location, um, uh, <laughs> different story types, text versus video, all the different things that I've shown you at least They've flown past on the screen today, and I do apologize. It's a one-hour lecture, not a one-day course. <laughs> There's a difference. But um, it is critical that you also understand the qualitative nature of what's being shared. And I don't know whether you would put favorability and sentiment in qualitative or quantitative. Probably today, because of the algorithm, it is quantitative. I want to stop saying that word. It is based on numbers and there are sentiment ranking engines out there. My issue has been a lot of them are falling over at the moment. Um, and I was looking at a SERP based a search engine based tool the other day and it was really skew whiff, really not at a level that I could probably explain what's going on to you guys, to students and clients and things like that. I expect sentiment and favorability ranking to improve. I do think LinkedIn leads into that area a little bit with their ranking of where you are in the industry because a lot of that has to do with 
um, how connected you are. But I want to go deeper than that. I want to know the voice, the impact of voice. So if if I was to set homework, I would actually put everybody to work on searching on this for me so I don't have to do it all myself. Laziest lecturer in the world. But I'm specifically interested in the mapping of the marketing voice to cut through. So voice may be shock jock. And if you think of some some politicians that are divisive, and if you're one of those politicians, you probably don't see yourself as divisive. You see yourself as creating debate on things that need to be debated. So let's put it that way. Um, I don't work in marketing for no reason at all, you know. But I would suggest that we look at the, I want something that's looking at the behavioral analytics, the behavioral psychology analytics behind what's being posted. And that basically means an AI because you need an artificial intelligence engine that is learning what sarcasm is, uh, what passion is. We do know that there is a sentiment analysis that goes into the algorithm. One of the reasons why when you say congratulations, it turns into different colored text and there's balloons and things like that is because the algorithm's trying to understand the higher emotion-based stories that are meme-worthy, you know, passion connected to a story gets cut through. If you're in government, try not to do that boring, safe, vanilla voice. You are going to have to at least use humor. <laughs> Sorry, it is what it is to... To, to notify the algorithm that there are s semantic keywords in here that, that are sentiment-based. If you'd like that in plain English, and I'm sure you would because I was just riffing then, it's that if it bleeds, it leads, but also positive stories, upworthy stories are popular with the inspo crowd. There you are. I got down with the social media speak. Rather than saying, we the, we the organization would like to announce that our policy has been released, you want to say something like, are you angry about X, Y, Z? Are you thrilled about blah, blah, blah? Read this. You know, it's about creating a high emotion. High emotion gets more engagement and more reach, I guess, virality. Don't go for clickbait. That's a that's not high emotion. That's emotional manipulation and the algorithm's learning how to get rid of that stuff. The educational voice, hello, pleased to meet you, is also a legitimate voice. And it's one of the reasons why I use the word student and lecture and things like that. But how to measure that using easily accessible tools, I'm not sure. Everything I've looked at, and I've got bookmarked, just looking up at my bookmarks and you can't see them. All my bookmarks around sentiment um, are either not working or they've been suspended. I think Crystal Nose has gone, hasn't it? I haven't shown this since last year. Oh no, it's still there. So I don't know if you're familiar with this one. But um, they always analyzed where well, they were analyzing what people were posting on socials and then giving that data to HR sales hiring and training processes so the ability to scrape um, a staff member's profiles and then see their sentiment and personality types from that. I don't know if they're doing it anymore. I saw somewhere that they weren't. I don't know if it was a privacy issue or not. Maybe that's your homework. Have a look and see what happened to Crystal Nose as an analytics program for sentiment analysis of staff's profiles. That was a bit of a mouthful. Okay, so it's 1.57. If there's no more questions or any that I can answer today, yeah, yeah, we will. We will. We will. We will we'll go into some of this stuff in more detail in later lectures. I can't promise it'll be for government. What I want to do with the lecture series is take 
Uh, at the moment, I'm working with, a, or I have been working with about 18 or 19 politicians. So these are common things, common threads. Of course, it's personalised for them in their areas, but um, these are common questions and common threads. But I also have other industry sectors that I'm working with. And so if you have an idea of an industry sector that you'd like me to do a similar kind of series with, but that's not government. It would have to be quite different from government. It probably needs to be retail, FMCG, fast-moving consumer goods, you know, the big volume goods, or maybe B2B like uh, lawyers, maybe education. I know I know quite a lot about universities and colleges and social media campaigns around them. Um, Gary? Really? You'd love an OBS with ATEM discussion. That's that's a behind the scenes on how I do my lectures. I tell you what I do. Compromise. Gary's just asked if I can do a session on OBS and ATEM. I'll make a deal with you. The next series will be on education. So it will be for universities and colleges. It will be social media around them, but also online educators, nano courses, peer-to-peer -peer education. And because you asked so nicely, although you didn't say please, so maybe not. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, we'll do a how I provide uh, online training so it'll be my online courses my live stream public webinars and my private zoomy stuff because you I don't know if you know this but you can connect your stream deck in your black magic ATEM and your OBS project into zoom to do all the lovely broadcasty things that you want to do on zoom as well So I hope you found this interesting. What's our next session going to be on? Right, next Monday, of course, at 10.45 is social media news. And I want to talk about how a very naughty social media group on Reddit hijacked Wall Street, specifically GameStop. That, that's going to be a fun one because I want to I want to talk about how no industry is safe from being media jacked, uh, social media jacked or um, news jacking or meme jacking and they completely inflated the price <laughs> and Wall Street went bonkers and didn't know what was going on because they're not running any kind of social media monitoring dashboards which is just ridiculous given that we can now tap social media into stock prices and see what's happening on social media as stock prices fluctuate. Why they're not using those big data tools, I have no idea. Maybe I should have included that in the analytics, but we're out of time. It's 2.01. Um, and then that's 10.45 on Monday, and that's the news. So we're going to talk about GameStop. I'm writing it down with a pen because it helps me remember. And then the other one we're doing is Thursday next week. We're staying on government, but we're going to talk about content calendars and that's a very generic term it's content calendars it's uh, social media diaries in general not just content calendars but all the other stuff including an electronic programming guide and the importance of that for government local government federal government politicians ministers councillors councils whatever and that will be a one-hour lecture at 1 p.m. Sydney time, Thursday next week, which is uh, the 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, the 4th, whatever. <laughs> Gary, please, in capitals. Good lad. Okay, so that's got me sorted for next week. I hope you can join me then. Um, if you know somebody who'd be interested in this, please ask them to join us. 
I'm going to gradually start opening this up. I don't notify people ahead of time. I don't um, send out email newsletters or anything like that. But I think it's at almost at the quality where I feel comfortable doing that. So I will start telling people about the Monday news and the Thursday lectures. So if you know somebody who you think would be interested, share it into a group or let them know. That would be awesome. Don't go spammy. I'm not asking you to spam. I'm just saying if you know somebody who works as a social media manager or who's working for local politicians or something, ping them, let them know. Maybe I'm for them. Maybe I'm not. It's up to them. All right. I am going to love you and leave you. And uh, thanks to Gary and Katrina for joining in and for (laughs) leaving me such wonderful comments. I really, really appreciate it. All right, guys. See you on Monday.